I've survived for over 500 days in this hardcore world, and in that time, I've gotten a ton of items, so much that my current storage system is completely maxed out. I just don't have any more room in this tiny house. So today, we'll be building an absolutely massive storage system, with room for over 6.5 million items. Now, since this storage system is going to be so massive, I'm going to be building it inside of this mountain. But before we can do any building, we have to hollow out an absolutely enormous area for it. So let's head inside this mountain, dig out an area to place my beacon, Oh my gosh, there's four skeletons in here. Why? All right, let's start placing down my beacon. Here we go. And then we'll put haste two on it and start mining. This is definitely going to take a while. Okay, that took me five hours of non-stop mining. Are you guys ready to see how it looks? Check this out. This is insane. This storage system is gonna be enormous. Oh, a creeper. Wait, oh, no, don't explode. Oh, I broke my beacon. Oh, it's so annoying. And I also broke my Silk Touch pickaxe like four times. So I wasted so many levels getting all these new ones. But this area is all done being cleared out. So now we have to start collecting up the materials that we'll need to build a storage system. And there's five main ingredients that we'll need. Oak wood, spruce wood, iron, redstone, and deep slate. Now in between episodes for quite some time now i've been trading with my clerics to get some redstone using my tree farm and my iron farm has been constantly running in the background ever since we built it so in these chests is 380 stacks of iron at my tree farm i've saved up 350 stacks of oak logs and from my villagers i've gotten just over 15 stacks of blocks of redstone all of that took weeks to gather up i've been planning this build for quite a long time but that leaves us with just two main ingredients left to get and that's 44 stacks of spruce logs and 19 stacks of deep slate let's see do i have deep slate oh i do wow that's all the deep slate that I'll need. I did not think that I already had this much. So the only thing we have left to get now is spruce logs. Let's grab some bone meal and my spruce saplings and we'll get to work collecting up all this spruce wood. Okay, and in basically no time at all, here are all the spruce logs that I'll need. So now it's time to craft some shulker boxes, and then we can start turning all the raw ingredients into the items that we'll need. First up, I'm gonna need 60 stacks of chests. So let's grab all my oak logs, as well as a crafting table, and start crafting all of it into some chests. Oh wait, not only am I gonna need 60 stacks of chests, but I'm also gonna need 75 stacks of hoppers. And you also need chests to craft hoppers, so we're gonna need 135 stacks of chests. That is insane. Okay, there we have it, all 135 stacks of chests. And now let's start turning these chests into some hoppers. All right, that's all the hoppers taken care of. So now up next is 13 stacks of comparators, repeaters, and redstone torches. We're gonna need all of that for all of the auto sorters. So first I'll head over to my bartering farm and I'm gonna need to grab 13 stacks of quartz for the comparators. All right, we got all of that. That was extremely easy. And also, by the way, this is why I built this bartering farm. All of the farms that I've built in this world have been in preparation for this one build and they're all proving to be super useful. But now we can head back home and start crafting everything up. And there we go, that's all these items done. So now that I have all these ingredients out of the way, that leaves us with all the ingredients that I'm gonna use to decorate the storage system. Stuff like spruce planks, deep slate tile stairs, strip spruce logs, and a bunch of other random items. And it's probably gonna take me a while to get all of that, so I'll just be back once it's all done. Okay, and here we have it. These 33 shulker boxes contain everything that we'll need to build this massive storage system. But before we get started, I wanna light up this entire area. Cause as you can see, there's tons of mobs in here. And I don't want skeletons shooting me or creepers blowing me up when I'm trying to build. So I brought all these torches with me. Whoa, wait, my shield's like glitched out. Look, I'm not even touching my mouse. That's like super OP. I'm taking like no damage, this is amazing. Okay, well, I guess we'll just keep it being glitched out and I'll go around placing a bunch of torches. This is actually so nice. And there we have it, everything is all lit up now. So now I'm just gonna kill the rest of the mobs in here. And there we have it, a perfect area for building. This is such a big project, I don't even know where to begin. But I think I'm gonna start with placing down all the chests. So I'm gonna grab my three shulker boxes of chests, place them down right here for easy access. And here we go, I'm gonna start placing down all the chests. This is gonna be insane. <laughs> Okay, and here we have it. Here are all 3,826 chests. And as I was doing that, I realized I haven't even explained to you guys what the plan for this build is. So let me tell you that real quick. Each of these columns of chests is gonna be a separate storage area. There's gonna be nine different areas in total. And each different area is gonna store a unique type of item. So over here is gonna be all the wood. Over here will be all the building blocks. This one will be for all the colored blocks. This one will be for all the natural blocks like dirt and moss. This one will be for redstone. This one will be for random items. This one will be for all the blocks that we get in the end. This one will be for 
all the blocks that we get in the nether, and this one will be for all the unstackable items. And that's the plan for the storage system. So now that I've placed down all these chests, it's time to link up all the auto sorters to them. And there's going to be 900 individual auto sorters, which means we'll be able to fully automatically sort 900 unique items. That is going to be insane, but also extremely useful because I'll just be able to throw all my items into one chest and then it'll sort them all automatically for me. I can't wait, but let's grab all my repeaters, comparators, redstone dust, and torches, as well as some stone to build all the auto sorters, and then we can get to work. Okay, and there we have it. One of the most time-consuming parts of this entire project is finally finished. I have all 900 auto sorters all in place. But now that I have this done, it's time to make the system to load the items into the storage system. And that's going to go right over here. I already have some hoppers placed down, but I'll have to place a chest on top like this. And then I can grab all these random items. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to need some kelp. I think I have tons of it in here though, right? There we go. Look at this chest. My chests are a disaster. I mean, look at this. This is why I need this storage system. But we have the kelp. And now we're going to place a dropper facing up right here. And then we'll build a little tower of glass going up to the top like this. All right, and then we'll enclose it like this, place down some water right here, and then we can place down some soul sand with some kelp on top, and that will turn this into a bubble column. There we go. And now we can just encase this whole thing in glass up top right here. And now we have to build some redstone circuitry down here. We have to place a comparator coming out of this dropper with a repeater, and then some redstone dust with a sticky piston right here, an observer right here, and right here. Okay, now if we put some items into this, then it should activate, shoot them all up right here, and then once all the items are out of the dropper, then it turns off. Okay, it's working. And then once the items flow up here, they'll enter into these hoppers and they'll flow around all of the auto sorters. And then down here is where the filters will be and they'll be picking up the items that flow above. And that's how this storage system works. There's only two things left to do. The first one's going to be configuring all the auto sorters. And I'm going to save that for last because it's going to take a super long time. And the second thing is going to be making it look good. And that's what all these spruce slabs, spruce stairs, and everything else is for. I'm going to start with building the floors and the walls in all nine storage areas. And I'll be back once I have that done. Okay, and here we have it. We're getting super close to finishing this build, but let me show you what these all look like. Inside of here, I have some deep slate tiles and deep slate bricks, as well as a lot of spruce and some glowstone up there for some lights, and then tons and tons of item frames to label all the chests. But now that I have this done, let's start working on the floor in the center right here. Now, instead of doing a normal floor like deep slate like I did inside of the storage systems, I'm going to be building a unique floor in front of each of the storage systems that represents what's inside. So let's get started on the first one, and that's going to be over here. This storage area is going to house all of the building blocks, and that's going to be things like stone, cobblestone, sand, bricks, andesites, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So let's gather up a bunch of materials and start building this floor. Okay, and here we have it. Now over on this side, it's going to be the wood area. And I've left some gaps in the center so we can blend the two floors together. And this floor is going to be made mainly out of dark oak wood. So let's grab my dark oak planks as well as my stripped dark oak logs, and then we can get to work. All right, and here's how it's looking so far. We have two of the nine floors complete. So now we're going to move on to these two over here. This one's going to be where all the colored blocks live, and this one's going to be for all the natural blocks. So I'm going to build this one out of rooted dirt, coarse dirt, moss, and grass. And then over here, it's going to be mainly different colors of terracotta. And now it's time to start building these floors. Okay, that's these two floors complete. This is starting to look really good. And now to work on the next two. This one's going to be for mainly random items. And I had quite a hard time coming up with something that looks good, but I think some amethyst would look pretty cool. And it's the same story with the redstone area. I didn't really know what to do for the floor. So I'm just going to do some skulk. And I think both of these blended together should look really cool. But let's go grab my materials. I'm going to need lots of amethyst and lots of skulk. All right, let's get to work. Okay, check this out. These two look really good together. But now we just have three floors left to do. The nether, the end, and then all the unstackable items and the ores. Now these two areas are going to be pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to be some endstone and some netherrack. But over here, since we have all the ores, I'm going to put some deep slate down on the floor, as well as all the deep slate variations of all the ores. It took me quite a while to find all of these, and the only one that I couldn't find was deep slate emerald ore. That stuff is extremely rare, but I think it should still look good. So let's grab up all my materials, and then we'll get to work. All right, and here we are all done. This normal emerald ore does look kind of out of place though, but maybe in a future episode, I'll replace this with deep slate. If you guys have any tips on finding deep slate emerald ore, please tell me, because I spent so long trying to find some and I was unsuccessful. But now that I'm looking at this end area, it looks kind of empty. And I realize it's because I totally forgot about chorus plants. So let's go get some. I think I should have some chorus flowers at home. Oh, there we go, chorus flowers. Let's go see if this will work. Oh, it's too dark right here now. There's creepers spawning. Just go away. I guess I'll plant a couple like this, but I guess we'll wait for these to grow for a little bit 
bit, and then I'll trim them down to size once they're huge. But now that I have all the floors done, it's time to do the walls and the ceiling. The ceiling is going to be basically exactly the same as in here, but for the walls, I'm going to use some stripped spruce wood and some spruce planks. So let's gather up some materials, and then we'll get to work. Wow, look at how this is turning out. This is really starting to take shape. But now that I have the walls done, it's time for the roof. So let's grab the rest of my materials, and I'll be back once I have the roof done. Okay, it's all done. Are you guys ready to see this? So here's the outside, and then here we are on the inside. This looks so cool. But although we're done building the storage system, we still have tons of work to do. And that's going to be to configure all the item sorters and to place all the items in their item frames. We're going to need about 900 individual items for this. But I think we should start with the easy items first, and that's all the wood. We have to find each individual wood type and craft up everything that you can craft with wood. So that's planks, doors, boats, buttons, pressure plates, everything. Now, I already have quite a bit of spruce items left over from this build, so we'll start with that. And all the spruce items are going to go on this side. We're going to start with the logs right here, and then the stripped logs, and then some wood, some stripped wood, and then planks, slabs, and stairs. And then right here, I'm going to place doors, pressure plates, buttons, fences, fence gates, signs. Right here will be hanging signs, and then over here will be the boats. Now, how do you craft a hanging sign? Let's see, I don't think I've ever crafted one before. Oh, it's just two chains and stripped logs? That is so expensive. Okay, well, that's fine, because I have tons of iron and tons of wood, so it should be okay. Okay, but let's craft up two chains, and then we'll go like this. There we go. And then I'll place that right here. And that's all the spruce items done. But now I'm just going to have to repeat that for all the other wood types. And I'll be back once I'm all done. Okay, and here it is. All the wood items are now organized, but I still have to configure all the auto sorters. And for that, we're going to need 53 stacks of filter items. And I think for that, I'm going to use renamed stone since I have tons of it. All of these chests are full of stone. So let's go grab some empty shulker boxes, fill them up with stone, head over to my enchanting cave to grab an anvil, and then we have to rename all of it. I think I'm just going to do this. Stone. I should make it go a lot faster. Okay, and there we go. Two shulker boxes of stone. So let's head back to the storage system now. And I've conveniently laid out all these shulker boxes that have all the items that I need to filter. So in here is all the spruce items, in here is all the oak items, and then there's shulker boxes for all the rest. So first I'll do the spruce items, and I think I should be able to sneak in right here, and let's see. Okay, right here will be the doors, filtered out with some stone, and then the pressure plates, the buttons, the fences, the fence gates, the signs, and the hanging signs. Alright, that's this top portion done, so I'll fly down here, and then right here will be the logs, the wood, the stripped logs, the stripped wood, the planks, the stairs, the slabs, and the trap doors. And there we go, that's all the spruce items done. So now I'm just going to have to repeat this for all the rest of the wood types. Okay, everything is all configured, so I think we should test it out. Let me just quickly break in right here, and I want to make sure these auto sorters are working properly. So I think I'm going to isolate just this section from the rest of the auto sorters, and I'm going to do that by breaking these hoppers, and then reroute them so it forms a closed loop like this. Okay, here's a moment of truth. I really hope this works. I have tons of random wood items in here, so I'll load them into our input chest. Okay, it sounds like it's working. Oh, I'm scared, guys. Let's see, is anything getting filtered yet? Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Let's just see if this item stream is working. Okay, it definitely is. Let's just throw the rest of these wood items in here as well. And you know what? As a test, I want to see what happens if I accidentally put a shulker box in here. Hopefully nothing should happen and it should just filter through. But I want to make absolutely sure that it doesn't break the entire system before we finish the rest of this. Okay, everything should have made it through. Let's see. Okay, here's the shulker box. I also placed some stone in here to make sure that that wouldn't get filtered out. Wait, dark oak wood got filtered out? Hold on. It looks like that's the only thing that didn't work though. All these other items should have gotten filtered out. But let's see, dark oak wood is right here. That's 10 sorters away from from this end. So let's go investigate. Nine and ten. Okay, this is the tenth one. Oh, I put spruce wood in here. Let's put dark oak wood in here now. Let's just put it into this hopper. Let's see if it works. Okay, nice. Okay, everything is working. That is a huge relief. I'm glad I built everything correctly. So now up next, we're going to work on the building block section. And it's going to be kind of the same thing as what I did over here. So I'll just be back once it's all done. Okay, so I got a little carried away, and I decided to actually work on the rest of the storage system as well. Here's the colored items all complete, and also the building block section that I was working on earlier. But as I was working on this, I realized we're missing quite a few items that I need to complete this. For example, down here, I need all the mud blocks. Up here, I need all the blocks that you get from ocean monuments, and a whole bunch of other items to go in the rest of the storage system. So let's go on a little adventure and get those items. First up is all the items that we need from an ocean monument. And I think over in this direction, there should be an ocean. Okay, there is. Let's see. We're on the hunt for an ocean monument now. Oh, there's one. I'll put on my chest plate and we'll quickly break in right here and try to kill the Elder Guardian. Okay, come on. Here we go. Okay, wow, that was very easy. All right, there's two more Elder Guardians that we have to kill. I haven't even gotten mining fatigue yet. There's one more right over here. 
Okay, that's the second one. I still haven't gotten mining fatigue. What's going on? But let's break into the third area. And here he is. Wow, I didn't even need any milk for that. That was so weird. But let's start gathering up all these blocks now, since that's what we're here for. And let's also see if I can find some sponge. Oh, here's some sponge. I got a tied armor trim. Did I get that from killing an elder guard again? That is so weird. I didn't even know this armor trim existed, but I guess we'll have to try that out later. But now that I found these sponges, that's actually everything that I'll need from here. And let's go find the second item. And that's going to be two Nautilus shells. And you know what? We're actually in the perfect spot. Since to get Nautilus shells, we're going to have to kill some drowns. So I guess first we'll wait until nighttime. All right, it's about to be nighttime. Let's see if I can find some drowns. I'm gonna turn on the hitboxes to make this a little bit easier. And we have our first one right here. But we're only looking for the ones that are holding Nautilus shells. And both of those guys are not. Oh, there's tons over here. Look at this. Let's see. Is anyone holding a Nautilus shell? Oh, one is. Let's try killing you. There we go. We got one. And I just need one more. Okay, there's tons more over here. Let's see. Are any of these guys holding Nautilus shells? This one is. That was way easier than I expected. <laughs> and there we go. Two Nautilus shells. All right, now up next, I'm gonna need all the different block variations of mud. And to do that, we'll have to find a mangrove swamp. Okay, I'm in a normal swamp. Swamp, but I don't see any mangrove swamp. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's some right here. All right, now we'll just gather up a ton of mud. This makes such a fun sound. Okay, I think three stacks should be enough. So now next up on the list of items I need is every block from the deep dark. Now I know there's tons of deep dark below my house, so that's where I'm gonna look first. All right, I've made it home. And now I'll just fly into a cave and let's see what I can find. Hopefully some deep dark. Okay, we got some deep dark. Now I already have skulk blocks and skulk veins, but I'm just looking for skulk sensors, skulk shriekers, and skulk catalysts. I never thought I would be actively searching for skulk shriekers. Oh, there's one down there. Oh, there's tons of them. Okay, this might be a little dangerous. I gotta destroy the skulk sensor first. Okay, we're somewhat safe right now. If I fly down there, though, it's gonna set them off. Let's just quickly go. Okay, here we go. Skulk Shrieker. I need two of them. Okay. Oh, it's so dark. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, an Amethyst Geode. This is actually perfect because I need to craft a calibrated skulk sensor. So all these Amethyst shards will be perfect for this. Okay, nice. I think I have everything I need. Oh, no, I set off another Shrieker. I don't want to be in here right now. Oh, wait, I set off even more of them. Wait, is it gonna spawn one? Oh, this is bad. Okay, I have one more chance until it spawns one. I do not want to be dealing with the warden right now. Let's see, if I break this one, will I be okay? We're okay. Let's try to leave now. There's so many skulk sensors going off. I hate this. Okay, I think I should be safe now. The amount of things that I'm going through to build this storage system is insane. I'm risking my life for this. Okay, I'm at the surface, finally. Now, up next, we're gonna need a sniffer egg, which I should be able to get by just going like this. Oh, and I'm actually gonna need two of these. So let's breed these two together, and there we go. All right, now, up next, we have to kill two withers because we need two nether stars. So let's head to the end. Oh, I made an enderman angry. Why do they always spawn right there? That's the worst spot. I swear, every time I come to the end, I get an enderman angry. Okay, go away. Oh, there's so many of them angry. Why are you like this? All right, with those endermen taken care of, let's spawn a wither. We can then kill it, spawn one more, and also kill it. All right, with that taken care of, we just have one more item left to get, and that's two lodestones. And instead of mining for ancient debris, I'm gonna look for bridge bastions instead, since there's always one lodestone inside of bridge bastions. Is that one? Oh my gosh, it's a bridge bastion too. Let's quickly loot this chest. There we go, we got a lodestone. Okay, let's leave. All right, now we're just gonna need one more lodestone. All right, we're at the second bridge bastion, but let's quickly loot this chest. There we go. Oh, wait. Oh my gosh. Okay, two hearts. That was really bad. Okay, well, we got what I came for. So let's head up towards the roof and find a good piece of bedrock to get onto the roof. This should be good right here. I'll grab an ender pearl and here we go. Okay, nice. And now we can fly back home, craft up all the items I just collected, place them into their item frames, and that's the storage system fully complete. I cannot believe how long it took to do this. But that's gonna be all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.